The only time I was ever in jail was for uh, um, tickets to kind of, you know, uh, equipment tickets on my car, like taillights and stuff like that. And they matured if you ignore them, which I did. At least back in those days, they did. Excessive exhaust, that sort of thing. <laughs> so I was in uh, San Jose County Jail for a couple of days. And, you know, I was in for, you know, faulty taillights and stuff, but there was a guy in there who had done hit and run, and his life was just down the toilet. And he was just pacing back and forth. He couldn't even sit down. And there was someone else. I never figured out what he was in there for. And then there was Sweeney. Never caught his first name. Just called him Sweeney. And he was in there for heroin. And he was going cold turkey, and it was not fun. And I'll tell you, you know, I did substances back in those days, psychedelics mostly, and cannabis and that sort of stuff and I never went in that heroin direction and I think I might have Sweeney to thank for that it just did not look like anything I ever wanted to do you can just take that and flush it down the toilet as far as I'm concerned he was a nice guy though he was in trouble you know he was just in trouble that's all so I wrote him this song I never saw him again but I wrote this song for him anyway when I, was, when I got to New York in the village called Sweeney's Blues. Sweeney hasn't any reasons to be good and so alone. It's in and out of cars and courts. And sometimes Sweeney isn't doing very well. Sometimes it's needles, sometimes guns, and sometimes just he's got no place to go. So you ride down hard and bust the bricks with Sweeney's head all hidden under arms well, he's got friends from both sides now but friends are some you find you just can't trust soon they've got their hands on easy money and it's Sweeney's time that pays the way Just like Sweeney's And you know how far trouble goes well, They say he's fine and doing well Well, you know just how well that could be When you're shut up, locked, and jailed away And there's just no other place
few of us here tonight, so we all have a tremendous responsibility. You got to not only put tips in the musician's tip basket. That's not a basket. That's a bowl. That's, think of it as a food bowl. Think of it as a musician eating out of that food bowl right there. And maybe down on all fours, maybe there's a water bowl next to it. You know, scratching behind the ear or whatever. But that food, that's, you know, think of it that way. But you also got to come back here during the daytime. Because this is the kind of place that could save the life of a wayward teenager. Having been a wayward teenager, I know. <laughs> that's right. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Because this is the kind of night it is. A guy that I learned from, a lot of stuff from way back in the old days, in the California days, in the Chris Ramey days. Was uh, Billy Dean Andres. Billy Dean Andres. I'm mumbling on you. I was from one side of the tracks in San Jose, and he was from the other side. And I learned this song from him, and I played it for years before I ever found out that there was another way to play it. And the other way was the traditional way. It's an old bluegrass song, and he got a hold of it. He and a friend just kind of sat down one night and just kind of milling around on the guitar, and they started playing this pattern, and they sang these lyrics to, that, to this pattern. And this is not the way that it's, this is not the traditional way that it's done. But I always liked it, so... Take me far I'd rather be in some dark hollow where the sun, it don't never shine than to be all alone.
take me far on down the track I'm going away I'm leaving today and I'm going but I ain't coming back Ghost bikes, ghost bikes, ghost bikes, ghost bikes. Bicycles all over town, dangerous streets, they'll run. Among the stars with wildflowers on your handlebars, ghost bikes, ghost bikes, bicycles as free as a breeze. What could be more humane than these? Like pedal birds, that's what they are. Don't stand a chance against the car. was built on petroleum wheels, factory whistles and business deals, you could be a trick to the bottom line, you know they don't even see it till it's too late sometimes, ghost bikes, ghost bikes, ghost bikes. Somebody got hit on a Saturday night They took a bicycle and they painted it white Now it's a ghost
snakes in the photograph Could have been somebody that you almost knew mm, Could have been you Somebody invented a wheel Somebody else said Well this is going to be a big deal Humanity Is going to have to decide Whether to asphyxiate itself Or go out for a ride Ghost bikes Ghost bikes Ghost bikes Ghost bikes You want to change the world Do it one Step at a time Get out of that dinosaur And leave it behind ever written before ride some more I like this song and somebody that works here likes this song. So I'm gonna do it. I got some CDs for sale right down there. I got one, two, three, four, five different ones. Most people wanna most people buy all five, in fact, because they feed off of each other and they help to explain each other. Music can be opaque and songs can be difficult. And so you need reference points to understand them. I recommend. Oh, that's a good idea. I remember when the police came out with, what was it, Synchronicity. They had, I think it was three different album covers. It was the same design, but the colors were different. And the idea was that, I mean, you know, this like <coughs> breadhead stuff, what we call it, breadhead, money, head, you know. The idea was that a real police fan would buy all three just because the, out, the covers are different. Go figure. But I guess people did do that. So I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't it be cool to somehow figure out a way to do a song that you needed to buy three different CDs in order, in order to get the entire song? I don't know how that would be exactly. Maybe the guitar track is on one, the vocal is on another, and there's a fiddle on a third, something like that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. the butterfly time doesn't go very fast oh i brought that up because this song is on ghost bikes and the song i just played called ghost bikes obviously is on that's something you could do you could name a record after a song that's not on there <laughs> the song would be on another one that would be that that would work Valley of the butterfly, time doesn't go very fast. Things just seem to last. You may know I saw a butterfly dance like the butterfly does. 
made me think about how clumsy I was. I mean, oh, I saw a man on a bicycle balancing a load of wood. His balance was that good. I mean, oh, I saw a family of five on a motor scooter going out for a drive. a temple on the hillside I prayed to the Buddha for the flower to open up wide and then on I drank the good strong ginger tea was a melon so sweet and juicy on my sweater and something like an apple only better and you know the sun flew by on a butterfly breeze ricochet winged way up in the trees and you know my spirit got lighter and my head got clear I thought to myself I'm gonna stay right here and you know Circle eternity flows, but after a while you gotta go, I suppose. I mean, oh, everybody's got a home and I got mine. Don't say goodbye, say see you next time. You know. Delia was a gambler, gambled all around. Delia was a gambling girl, she paid her money now. Cause all I've got is gone. Delia's poor mother took a little trip out west. And when she got back home, she found little Delia gone to rest. 
But all I've got is gone. Delia's mother with Delia's father moan. Wouldn't have been so hard if our child had died at home. Cause all I've got is gone. Delia, oh Delia, how can it be? You love those rounders, but you don't love me. She's all I've got. Cutty looking high, Cutty looking low. Shot poor Delia with a 44. She's all I've got is gone. Cutty says to the judge, What'll be my fine? Judge says, Poor boy, will you get 99? She's all I've got is gone. Delia, oh Delia, how can I? Love those rounders, but you don't love me. Cause all I've got is gone. High up on a rooftop, far as I can see. Looking at those rounders all. All I've got is gone. Cut is in a jailhouse, drinking from an old tin cup. Dealer's in a graveyard, and she's not gonna wake up. She's all I've got is gone. Dealer, oh dealer, how can it be? You love those rounders, but you don't love me. She's all I've got. Got to get more people in here. I don't know what the deal is. What? A football game. Oh, my God. Is it that time already? I like sports, but football, I just, I don't know. Traumatic, traumatic brain injury and super shoulders, you know. Okay, this is a song. This is kind of a country song, I guess. Sort of, I guess. But country music, generally speaking, no offense, doesn't have a lot of uh, ideas in it. It's got some, I don't know, don't, I don't know what it is. It's weird. Anyway, this song has a, um, this is a story about how the Choctaw people in America, see, there were five different trails of tears, you know, and Choctaw was one of them. One of them. The most famous one is the one that, what's her name, wrote that song about? But anyway, there were five of them. And uh, each one was disastrous for the people that had to be force marched. They were force marches. And this song, it, 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 it's about how the Choctaw, after their force march trail of tears, when they were decimated, took up a collection and sent money over to Ireland for famine relief because they'd heard about what, what people over there were going through. And there's a line in the song that says, uh, it refers to uh, uh, reservations. Indian reservations, and it says, what a hundred years later the Germans would admire. And what that refers to is fairly well known, but not accepted, I don't think, that uh, 
uh, Hitler in his in his uh, de designing his plans actually referenced. I mean, you can find it. He actually referenced in writing, maybe in Mein Kampf. I know in, that he he was impressed with how America handled its Indian problem. Okay, and that was a big influence on him in handling the Jewish problem. I mean, I'm sorry, but that is true. And if you take out a $20 bill, if, if you have any left after be visiting the bowl, most people don't have any 20s left after they go over there. Did I mention I have a bowl? It's right there. Um, there's a guy on there named Andrew Jackson, and Andrew Jackson signed the papers to make the Trails of, trail, trails of Tears happen. <laughs> And then over 100 years later, Adolf Eichmann was picked up by the, uh, by the Israelis and some of the you know, Israeli police and brought over to, he was living in Argentina, and they brought him over to Jerusalem and they put him on trial. Most people don't understand that he didn't kill anybody and he did not organize camps and he did not, you know, he mainly organized train schedules to make sure that the trains ran on time to get people to the camps. But he organized train schedules, just nuts and bolts, little stuff. So when you, when you figure that, I figure it was correct what happened to him. I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not a pacifist per se. I, you know, I, I want to be as nonviolent as possible. But I think sometimes justice needs to be kind of hands-on. And it was okay that they did that. What they did basically was make an international um, example about how it is not okay to facilitate mass murder. You know, it's one thing to be actually pulling the trigger and making, you know, filling the rooms with gas and that sort of thing. And it is also entirely not okay to make the trains run on time so that those people would be taken to the camps. And that's what Eichmann did. And that's what Andrew Jackson did. So. Most closets don't have any doors on them, I've, I've found out. You know, skeletons in the closet. Those closets have no doors. Anyway, it's called Heroes and Survivors, and it celebrates what the Choctaw did about sending that money over to Ireland. And it goes like this. It's a song of celebration. Friends of mine are the heroes and survivors of a terrible time. Two great people separated by the sea, joined an understanding of a great calamity. Oh, great calamity. 1831, it was the darkest of their years. Andrew Jackson drove the Choctaw on the Trail of Tears with his saber and the rifle. On a thousand mile drive to the land of Oklahoma, only half would survive. Only half would survive. They called a reservation. It was a cage without a wire. What a hundred years later the Germans would admire. Surrounded by a state that held the lock and key to the vision of their future and their free humanity. Desperation. Driven to extremes, they died eating grass, their mouths stained with green. Oh, their mouths stained with green. And it was the British Empire that held the lock and key to their island reservation and their free humanity across the hungry countryside. They walked the trail of tears through death and emigration. Half the people disappeared.
travels fast. But it goes from hand to hand all across the mighty ocean to the Oklahoma land. And when the Choctaw heard the story of the Irish in their plight, they knew they were related, though their skins were red and white. Though their skins were red and white. And though their hands were nearly empty and their lands were nearly bare, they collected all the money that they thought that they could spare. And they sent it off to Ireland. Their unknown new friends, seven hundred dollars. It was a fortune to them then. It was a fortune to them then. Yeah. Now you may want to write my story. But I tell you there is goodness in the people of the earth And I tell you there is beauty in the darkest of the days And a light to come shine and blow the darkness all away Blow the darkness all away Is Clint still around? Okay. I hear you. I just want to make sure that that CD gets out and gets over to Joe. When it, okay. <laughs> this song is about... Uh, wow, man. I hate to even... I'm not even going to say the number. It's a number of years old. I wrote this song a few years ago. But I started doing it again because it kind of fits. For a while there, I toured around in Europe just a lot. I was there like almost all the time. And uh, I played in Switzerland a couple of times. Switzerland is a very trippy place. It's got like four languages, I think, in it, something like that, depending on where you go. It's like Swiss German, which is an ancient German dialect, and Italian and French. Maybe just the three. Yeah, those just, I thought there was another one. Who knows? <laughs> Before my second tour of Switzerland, something happened in the country. There were these autonomous youth centers. You know, think of the soul food books. But it's a little bit grungier, kind of, because, well, the, I played in one that was in a converted oil storage tank. You know, right, oh, it was cool, man. It was really, really cool. You know, the stage was built in there. It was round, obviously, you know, metal. It was, it was really cool. And being autonomous, it was run by young people for young people. So there you are, and it's a place to save your life. Again, you know, if you need to work through some stuff, you need to find out who you are, blah, 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 there you, there you go. And they were subsidized to a certain extent, I don't know what extent, by the Swiss government. Things got hard for somebody in the government. You know, somebody wasn't making as much money as they thought they should, so they started to cut corners. And as usually happens, they cut out the little people first. They're the ones that have to suffer first. And so what they did was, they completely cut the funding for the youth centers and shut them down. And on the same day, I don't know if they shut all of them down, but they shut the big one down in Zurich, or two of them down in Zurich. And on the same day, they've sent a big mountain of money to the opera house for new curtains, new carpets, new seats, all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, opera is class music, okay? It is not the common man's, working man's hammer and nail music. It just isn't. You dress up when you go to the opera. You don't go in your civvies. You know, it's fancy music. Sorry. So it was an insult, and it was a slap in the face. And young people had pretty much been, the pressure had been building up, and they kind of snapped, and they went out in the street. Along There's a main street in Zurich called the Bahnhofstrasse. Bahnhofstrasse, the railroad street. And um, I think it's Bahnhof, I think that's what that is, railroad street. 
And it's, it, that's where all the banks are, the numbered bank account banks, you know, and jewelry stores and the fur coat stores and stuff. And it's a right-wing conservative street. And they all, young people went out there and they just, they just let loose. They broke things. And they, one, one store that sold fur coats, they broke the windows and they took all the fur coats out and they piled them up in the street and put lighter fluid on them and burnt them. You know, they just kind of turned everything upside down for a few days there. And it spread throughout Europe because the pressure had been building. <laughs> Now, back home here in America, what we heard in the press was that, um, look at that. That's a Canadian guitar. Made in Texas? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> anyway, what we heard back in America was that, that uh, young people had gone crazy. That's what we heard. They'd gone crazy. And there was no reason for what they did. It was crazy and it was senseless, you know? And to my way of thinking, anybody with half a brain, when, 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 when that many people do something, there is a reason for it. You might not like the reason. The reason, reason might go against everything that you spent your life working on, but there is a reason. And if you have any brains at all, you'd better pay attention to it. Something that America, just as a country, just does not do is pay attention to other people's reasons. We stopped doing that a long time ago. We want everybody to pay attention to ours, but we don't pay any attention to theirs. So we're going to pay for that. We already are. So I wrote this little song to kind of tell the story of why that happened, and it's just called Zurich. Out on the midnight street Underneath the lamp light Right outside the diamond jewelry windows Dazzling your sight tonight And something in the blood that pounds Echoes in the hollow sound And it all comes tumbling down in Missouri It's taught among the rules of school That all that glitters must be gold And those who would not play the fool Must follow in the social Oh, but the well-to-do, beautiful people on public view Ain't got time for the likes of you in Zurich It all begins one morning fine when the government money comes to town A fortune goes to the opera, but not a penny trickles down To a youth center in the middle of town, gonna have to close it down can't afford to have you hanging around in Zurich. All in a shattering instant and upon that well-remembered night In a sudden clash with bricks and bottles Comes the most surprising sight As fired with a smoldering heat Five thousand angry rebels meet And break every window on that most beautiful street In Zurich Anarchy on streets of gold Lights the flashing sirens wail Frightened eyes behind the windows Watch the young ones off to jail Soldiers in their shouldered ranks, armed with water cannon tanks and rubber bullets to protect the banks of Zurich. Such a trouble be is this the writing on the wall, the pillars of society, or how they give an anxious call. And 
an orderly they plead for peace discipline to say the least and what we need is more police Ian's a little rick from the gardens of Geneva to the flowered streets of Amsterdam inside the walls of West Berlin trouble passes hand to hand in among these times that be no future do they see that's the way it was explained to me in Zurich Head full of pictures. I did that already. Yeah. <laughs> I do it again, but that's people. Are people. What's that? What's that? You walk out. He'll walk out. Uh, could I do it again for him? Would you mind? Uh, all right. The song is about post-traumatic stress disorder. The thing, that's the, th the thing that soldiers come back with. around with a head full of pictures and you don't want to know hanging in the air right in front of my face everywhere I go and I might start doping I might not stop I might cross over that line I just want to get numb stay that way all the time nobody should have pictures in the head like I Giving back to the people they wanted this war. I don't want to see him anymore. over that line, I might do 
something I might regret sometimes. That's right. Who gave me this head full of pictures? Well, I think I know. Some big shot sitting in a padded chair where the money's on flow. And I might start thinking, I might get smart. I might cross over that line and I might do something about it. Giving back to the people that wanted this war. I don't want to see him anymore. Afghanistan. Iraq. Syria. South Central Los Angeles. The Bronx. Pine Ridge. Thanks, everybody, for coming down and spending that time with me on a, what is this, a Thursday night? Hope everything went all right. Soul food. Soul food book. Red in town. Everybody ought to come down and take a look. they got prayer flags hanging from the ceiling. they got stars up there. Their head starts to reeling. Catch yourself kneeling. Down on the floor. I never seen a floor before like that one. Well, we're just about running out of time, and you started running out of time as soon as you start playing. Because the clock keeps going, you know. But now we're getting right down to the wire, and the wire's starting to fray. So I'll see you next month on a Thursday. Until then, thanks a whole bunch. Don't forget to tip the staff, the hang around staff, the paragraph staff, the try not to laugh staff, <laughs> photograph staff, you know what I'm talking about, the barista, the floor mopperistas, the ones who handle the shelves and the books, I gotta put the books under the shelves, that ain't easy to do, most people put the Books on shelves. They put the shelves under the books. You know what I mean? They throw those books up in the air and put the shelves under them so they land in the right place. That is not easy to do. So if you're watching online with the kind of free-flowing streaming thing that they do here at Soul Food Books, thanks for hanging out. And if you catch this later sometime, 20, 30 years from now, well, a little bit of history going down in Redmond just outside of downtown. Downtown is about, oh, I don't know, 150 feet away from here. Something like that. Downtown Redmond. This is almost downtown Redmond. There's a burger stand right over there. There's an overpass. Trader Joe's supermarket. Office store. A whole bunch of places to park your car. You've got to have a car to park your car. Though. If you don't have a car, can people come down if they don't have cars? Anyway, thanks a whole lot. I still got my tip jar there. It's still there. Been there the whole night. I still got CDs. I still got my hat. Imagine that. And I'm just about, just about ready to get done. Thank you.